Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chantel, and today I am so excited to review the new iPad minis. I've had a few days to play with these, and I have developed some thoughts. I have the last generation sitting here as well, so I wanted to give you my thoughts on whether or not I think these are worth it, but in the meantime, let's do a quick little unboxing first, and then we'll swing back around and I'll tell you my thoughts. I'll have timestamps down below as always, as well if you wanna jump around. Listen, I'm never going to get over how cute the iPad minis are. If you're looking for something that is an ultra portable design, it's really, really hard to beat these. Like if I was to compare this to something else like a Kindle, and we would all agree that a Kindle is a pretty small portable size. Here is the new Kindle and here is the new iPad mini. And they are, you know, very, very, very similar in size. Of course, the iPad's a little bit bigger and it has a little bit more capacity and capabilities than a Kindle does, but I wanted to just show it to you for reference. I know this is really great for people who do a lot of traveling. If you just want to bring one thing in your carry-on bag to be able to answer emails, to read, to do whatever else it is that you do, the iPad mini has never been able to be beat, I think, for that. And especially now that we have a few more features than we did before. I will say, aesthetically, these look pretty much identical. This is the iPad mini generation six and this is the iPad mini generation seven. And as you can see, they are pretty much exactly the same in size and weight. We do have a couple new colors. So this is the new blue and there's also a new purple. And then we have a space gray and we have a starlight. I love all of these colors for iPad mini. I will say that the blue and the purple remind me a lot of the iPad airline. So if you liked those colors, you're likely to like these ones as well. So of course, externally, these look like they're not not very different at all, but the differences come with a lot of the capabilities that we have now that we did not before. For one, we now have Apple Pencil Pro usage, and I am pretty obsessed with this. If you've watched any of my reviews from this year, I have been a big fan of Apple Pencil Pro. You have the option with Apple Pencil Pro to use the new squeeze feature, and that brings up a little quick menu that you can switch between tools really quickly. So if you're someone who takes digital notes or does digital art at all, you're gonna find that that's a tool that you use quite a lot. And you also have the option of using barrel roll. So this is a huge one if you are a digital artist. Before you would have to change your tool entirely if you wanted to use a paintbrush this way versus turning it on its axis and using it this way. And now with the Apple Pencil Pro, you're really just able to rotate your tool the way you would have rotated a paintbrush or a pencil and use it in a really natural way to quickly achieve the designs that you were hoping to make. And I'm happy to see that available for the iPad mini now as well. The new edition of the Apple Pencil Pro also brings hover to the iPad mini line. So you're able to hover over your screen and kind of see what your placement is, highlight apps this way. It just makes using an iPad even more easy and intuitive than it was before. It really does almost feel like magic. And I really do love the Apple Pencil Pro. The Apple Pencil Pro also has Find My, which is something that all of the Apple Pencils should have had because this is very, very easy to lose, especially since iPads really just 
magnetically attached to your pencil. So there's a good chance this comes off sometimes and you're able to use Find By Now to quickly locate where your pencil is. And I think that's a pretty genius feature that they should have included a long time ago, but now we have it. And the other thing I just really like about the Apple Pencil Pro is it's the same price as the previous generation of Apple Pencil anyway. And so now you're just getting a lot more capabilities in this one package versus in the package you would have got before. So if you've never had an iPad mini before, I don't know, I think this is a pretty good value that you're getting. That brings me to the next thing. You now also have an increased boost in performance. So you've got an A17 Pro chip is what they're calling it. But what is exciting to see about this is that you're going to be able to use all of those new Apple intelligence features that are coming. They said this fall, so hopefully any day now, we're gonna be able to see that image wand tool to generate AI images. We're gonna be able to have those writing tools, the new Siri. There's there's a ton of new Apple intelligence features that I'm dying to try, trying, dying to try that new emoji feature, but we're going to see those all probably this year. And it's nice to know that you're going to be able to use that with this new iPad mini. And a couple of things that people aren't even talking about, things that we have right now is that iPad mini is now capable to use with iPad Pro apps. So previously there were some apps that you weren't able to use on this older version of iPad mini, one of those being Final Cut Pro. You had to use either the Pro or the Air and now you're able to use Final Cut Pro on the iPad mini and for me, that is worth it alone. Now this tiny little tablet is something that I can do 80% of the work that I do with my pro iPad on something this small. And so if I was someone who traveled a lot, if I was someone who lived in a really, really small space, like I might go for this anyway, just for that portability factor, that lightness factor. The increase in performance is also gonna be really great for gamers. And I will say the iPad mini is my absolute favorite size of iPad for gaming because it really is that perfect handheld size and it really is optimized for a lot of these Apple Arcade games. And I don't know about you, I don't know if you've noticed, but there has been quite the Apple Arcade glow up in the last couple of years. A few years back, Apple Arcade, I used to cancel it all the time because I could never find a game I wanted to play. But now, I have so many games on my roster and a ton of these games, I specifically bought my Nintendo Switch to play and now that's not even plugged in because I use an iPad mini a lot more and you are going to see an increased performance on the iPad mini, of course with all of this new power. So that's really exciting to see. And finally, let's talk about the price because the iPad mini is not the cheapest iPad that exists, right? Even though it's the smallest, but it's also not the least powerful, especially now. This is like a tiny beast of a device. If you're the kind of person who just wants a small device that can do everything and you want the small size for portability, not because you think that the smaller size is cheaper, the iPad mini is really the perfect device for you, especially now. If you're the kind of person who wants one device to be your e-reader, to be a place where you can draw, can be a place where you can game, can be a place where you can take notes and send emails. It's very difficult to beat the iPad mini, especially now with access to pretty much everything. I would say like 90% of what's available in the iPad experience you can access now on an iPad mini that you weren't able to use with the previous generation. So this has become an even better device than it was before, even though externally, these guys look exactly the same. So you would not know that visually to look at it. Besides that, the price is exactly the same. So our entry price of the iPad mini is still $499, but you have twice the storage. So 128 gigabytes and it goes up to 512 gigabytes. And I'm even looking at the iPad mini six generation on Best Buy right now, because often when the new iPads come out, the old ones go on sale and I'm looking at the sale price and it's not significantly less. Like the 64 gigabyte storage option, which is pretty small, starts at 399 for the sixth generation still on Best Buy. So sometimes I do say go with the older version, but right now I think that the value comes with spending a hundred bucks more on getting the newer one, but that's totally up to you. So the sales are there, but I will say, I think that the iPad mini is totally worth it, especially if you like the size. The one thing that I would totally recommend doing though is going into the store if you've never had one before and picking it up and making sure this is the size that you want. 
In this day and age, there is no shortage of iPad options. So if this is too small for you, I would look at the Airs or even the iPad 10th generation if you wanted to save some money. But other than that, if you were just looking to see if you thought it was a good buy, I think it's a good buy. Will I be buying one for myself personally? Absolutely, because I do think that it's impossible to beat what you can do on a tiny device with anything else but the iPad mini. So I really do enjoy it. I hope that you enjoyed this review. I tried to get this up as quickly as possible. So let me know if you have any questions down below and I am gonna catch you next time. Bye.